In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today is a special and unusual day in many ways, because it is the feast of St. Pius X, first of all. And the feast of St. Pius X is special to us because it is St. Pius X who warned us at the turn of the century of the evil that was to come and said that if the modernists, whom he called the worst enemies of the church, ever penetrated and got into positions of authority, that they would destroy the faith. And so it is by St. Pius X's warning and by his authority that we resist this modernism that comes down to us from John the 23rd and from Paul the 6th and John Paul II because there is no place in the Catholic Church for private judgment rather we must always cite the authority of the church for what we think and what we do and so St. Pius X is the object of our special devotion but the day is special in another way, and that is, on this feast of St. Pius X, the modernists have decided to canonize, or excuse me, beatify, on the same day, John the 23rd and Pope Pius the Ninth. Now, John the 23rd is the one that called Vatican II in 1960. Pope Pius IX reigned from 1846 to 1878. It is truly absurd that both of these people should be declared to be in heaven because everything that John the 23rd ever thought and did was condemned by Pope Pius IX. The whole spirit of Vatican II the whole idea of modernizing the church was condemned by Pope Pius IX. And I'm not the only one to say it, even if you read the Novus Ordo newspapers, they're pointing this out, that there is such a contradiction between the two that it is truly absurd. And the reason why they're beatifying John the Twenty-Third is in order to beatify modernism and Vatican II. After 35 years of Vatican II, we have an absolute and total disaster in the Catholic Church. A loss of faith which is devastating. The disappearance of vocation the reign of heresy in seminaries and universities, the destruction of the Catholic liturgy, the immorality of the clergy that is unspeakable. Everywhere you look, there is nothing but the degradation of the Catholic faith, and that is the result of Vatican II. And now we learn today that this complete destruction of our faith was handed to us by a saint. That's the message. And at the same time, this destruction of our faith, which was condemned by Pius IX, is rather, it is Pius IX beatified with him, which makes no sense at all. Now, let me point out a few things about the new Saint Roncalli. Lest anyone be deceived. And I'm speaking about John the 23rd. His family name is Angelo Roncalli. And 
beatification is a declaration that a person is in heaven. When he was a seminarian, his personal intimate friends were a father, Bonayuti, who would die as an unrepentant and excommunicated modernist. He was excommunicated by St. Pius X for modernism, and he died unrepentant even though a priest came to him and asked him to repent. He said no. That was his, Roncalli's assistant priest at his ordination. Another was a priest by the name of Rossi, who would end up becoming a Protestant. Another intimate friend was a seminarian by the name of Turki, who was a collaborator of Vonayuti. And Vonayuti was the assistant priest also of this Turki at his ordination. And so already as a seminarian, he was connected with prominent modernists. Roncalli, as a young priest, was called to Rome in 1914 on the accusation that he was using a modernist textbook in his church history class in the seminary. And this textbook and this author, Duchenne, was condemned by St. Pius X, who was the reigning pope. And it was Cardinal Delay who called him to Rome and asked him, are you using Duchenne in your course? And this Father Roncalli answered and swore with an oath that he did he had not even read Duchenne. Now even his admirers say that this was a lie. That the evidence is so clear that he was a follower of Duchenne and that he was teaching Duchenne in the seminary that this has to be a lie, even under oath. Cardinal Delay apparently thought the same thing, for he wrote in his record in the Vatican, suspect of modernism. And this was confirmed by John XXIII himself, who, when he became Pope, went to his file in the Vatican and found the notation of Cardinal Delay. 1914. He was also an intimate friend of a certain Dom Baudouin, who was an avid ecumenist in the 1920s, favoring the reunion of all churches, and he was the one that cooked up the what is now the Vatican II church theology, which is to say that there is one big church of Christ that everyone belongs to and that is distinguished from the diverse churches such as the Catholic Church or the Anglican Church or the Lutheran Church. That the Church of Christ is not the same thing exactly as the Catholic Church. He was the one that thought that up and again Roncalli was a an intimate friend of Dom Baudouin, it was Dom Baudouin who said, we need a pope to call a council who will consecrate, which will consecrate ecumenism. He said that in the 20s or the 30s. Roncalli, when he was apostolic nuncio in Bulgaria in the 1920s, contributed money to the rebuilding of schismatic churches saying that, quote, all are houses of God, the Orthodox are our brothers. 
there had been an earthquake in Bulgaria which destroyed a number of churches and he gave money to the rebuilding of the schismatic churches. This Saint Rancali, also while in Bulgaria, was known to go frequently to the masses of the schismatics and to participate actively in them, which is a mortal sin. When he was apostolic nuncio in Turkey, he gave, he gave a sermon saying this, Quote, Catholics in particular liked to mark themselves off from others, meaning our Orthodox brothers, Protestants, Jews, Muslims, believers or non-believers in other religions. My dear brothers and children, I have to tell you that in the light of the gospel and Catholic principle, the logic of this division does not hold. Jesus came to break down all these barriers. He died to proclaim universal brotherhood. The central point of his teaching is charity, that is, the love which binds all men to him as the elder brother and binds us all to, with him to the Father." Unquote. And so you see already in the 1940s he was nuncio to Turkey in, during the war in the 1940s. He has in this paragraph the seed of all of the doctrine of Vatican II. And that is, it doesn't matter what you believe. As a matter of fact, Jesus came to erase all of these barriers between human beings, all of the barriers of dogma and doctrine and the division of the churches. It doesn't matter what you believe. What matters is love. All you need is love. That is the message of the Vatican to religion. We've been hearing it for years. In the seminary we had a term for it. It was known as bomb fog. Brotherhood of man, fatherhood of God. The same old thing, Sunday after Sunday, from the Novus Ordo, bomb fog. And that comes from the mind of Roncalli, that the doctrinal differences between the churches are bad. And the purpose of Christianity and of, of Christ's coming is to break down the barriers of dogma. When he was apostolic nuncio to Paris, he said, quote, Often I find myself more comfortable with an atheist or a communist than with certain fanatical Catholics, unquote. That was in the late 1940s. And when he was nuncio in Paris in the 40s and early 50s, <coughs> at his nunciature, he would receive guests, and among these frequent guests and personal friends were the following. Leon Blum, who was a Jewish socialist and who had forged in the late 1930s an alliance between the socialists and the communists. He was a personal friend of Roncalli. Another friend was Vincent Oriol, who was an atheist and a socialist. Another was Edouard Herriot, who was a member of the Radical Socialist Party. And another, and perhaps the most interesting, was a certain Yves Marsodon, who was a 33rd degree Freemason and a venerable master of a prominent lodge in France known as the Republic. This friendship with Yves Marsodon would continue for many years, even after the election of Roncalli to the papacy. 
And Yves Marsodon, in an interview, told the interviewer that Roncalli had counseled him to remain a Freemason. Now, the Freemasonry, as you know, is the sworn enemy of the Catholic Church. Pope Leo XIII called it in his encyclical the synagogue of Satan. And he told this Yves Marsodon to remain a Freemason. He also said that John XXIII received him warmly at Castel Gandolfo and when he was Pope and encouraged him in his work of bringing together the churches and of bringing together the Catholic Church and Freemasonry. This is St. Roncalli we're speaking about. This same saintly man said this, quote, All men are sons of God, independent of what religion they profess. The essential thing is to be honest and faithful to one's own conscience and consequently to his own faith, unquote. And so we see again this idea that it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you believe what what you think is right. That objective truth doesn't matter. And so Mother Teresa said in an interview once that she would tell a Hindu to remain a good Hindu, to be a good Hindu. And we see why, therefore, John Paul II goes from place to place and participates in every imaginable religion. Because what counts is that you're following your conscience. This is why he has told the Orthodox, that is the schismatics, that they won't proselytize, the Catholic Church will not proselytize in Greece and other places where the Orthodox Church is established. That is, the Catholic Church will not seek converts in those places. Because all that matters is that you follow your own conscience. St. Roncalli also said, if I were born a Muslim, I believe that I would have stayed a good Muslim, faithful to my religion, unquote. He addressed the city council of Venice when he was the cardinal patriarch of Venice, among whom were socialists and Marxists, atheists, free thinkers, leftists. He said, I am happy to be among busy people because only the man who works a good purpose is truly a Christian. Indeed, the only way to be a Christian is by being good. This is why I am happy to be here, even though there may be some present who do not call themselves Christians, but who can be acknowledged as such because of their good deeds. And so, again, it doesn't matter what you believe. As long as you do good deeds, that makes you a Christian in the mind of St. Roncalli. And in 1957, when the Italian Socialist Congress was meeting in Venice, who have as their symbol the hammer and sickle, he addressed these words. He sent official greetings to them. Quote, I extend a cordial welcome in order that the sons of Venice, hospitable and affable as is their wont, contribute to making more profitable the gathering of so many brothers of all the regions of Italy for a common elevation to the ideals of truth, of good, of justice, and of peace. Unquote. To the Italian Socialist Congress whose symbol is the hammer and sickle. And 
when, after he had been elected pope, he was being interviewed by a free-thinking Italian journalist who asked about the canonization of Pope Pius X, which had taken place in 1954. He said, in, in a, an outburst of reaction to the question, he said, he's no saint. This is Saint Roncalli. And so, at the, on the same day as they are beatifying this holy man, they are also beatifying Pope Pius IX. Now, Pope Pius IX is the pope that condemned religious liberty. He condemned the idea that every man has a right to believe and to profess and to practice whatever religion he pleases. He condemned the idea that the state ought to be indifferent to religion and that all everyone should be given a, a freedom to do and profess whatever he pleases concerning matters religious. He condemned that. Listen to what he says in his encyclical Quanta Cura. He says, and from this holy false idea of social organization, they do not fear to foster that erroneous opinion, especially fatal to the Catholic Church and to the salvation of souls called by our predecessor of recent memory, Gregory XVI, insanity, namely that liberty of conscience and of worship is the proper right of every man and should be proclaimed and asserted by law in every correctly established society that the right to all manner of liberty rests in the citizens not to be restrained by either ecclesiastical or civil authority and that by this right they can manifest openly and publicly and declare their own concepts whatever they be by voice, by print or in any other way while in truth they rashly affirm <clears throat> this they do not understand and note that they are preaching a liberty of perdition a quote from St. Augustine and that quote and he's quoting Leo the Great here who lived in the 5th century that quote if human opinion, opinions always have freedom for discussion there could never be wanting those who will dare to resist truth and to trust in the eloquence of mundane wisdom when faith and Christian wisdom know from the very teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ how much it should avoid such harmful vanity, unquote. And he condemned this idea with his apostolic authority, saying this, In such great perversity of evil opinions, therefore, we, truly mindful of our apostolic duty and especially solicitous about our most holy religion, about sound doctrine and the salvation of souls divinely entrusted to us and about the good of human society itself have decided to lift our apostolic voice again and so all and each evil opinion and doctrine individually mentioned in this letter by our apostolic authority we reject proscribe and condemn and we wish and command that they be considered as absolutely rejected, proscribed and condemned by all the sons of the Catholic Church. Now listen to Vatican II. This Vatican Synod declares that the human person has a right to religious freedom. This freedom means that all men are to be immune from coercion on the part of individuals or of social groups and of any human power 
in such wise that in matters religious no one is to be forced to act in a manner contrary to his own beliefs nor is anyone to be restrained from acting in accordance with his own beliefs whether privately or publicly whether alone or in association with others within due limits that means if you're a Lutheran or Jewish or Muslim you are not to be restrained in the practice of your religion and that means exactly what Pius IX condemned with his apostolic authority that there should be a free for all of all religions and so how can you beatify these two people and especially on the same day when Pius IX would anathematize the very person whom you're beatifying with him that makes no sense it is absurdity but the modernists have no trouble with it because they say well Pius IX was in his time and he was reacting to things in his day just as the Council of Trent was speaking about things in its day and so the modernists can agree with everything and at the same time assent to nothing because they believe in evolution of dogma they believe that <clears throat> the church's teaching changes and so it's not a problem for them <clears throat> I learned last night that in Mexico God and the mother of God were blasphemed in a most horrid manner because at an exhibition of pictures in Mexico there was a painting done of Our Lady of Guadalupe and instead of seeing on the cloak of Juan Diego, the seer, the magnificent, miraculous image of Guadalupe that we all are familiar with, what did the painter put? A naked woman. And a traditional seminarian not the one we have here had the courage to go to that exhibition and rip it up and he spent three days in jail for it so did St. Paul spend time in jail But the reason and, and the outcry after it was ripped up was freedom of conscience, freedom of religious expression. And that country, which was once the center of Roman Catholicism in the New World, the center of Catholic civilization in the New World, has now been brought low by this blasphemy that cries to heaven for vengeance against the mother of God and what is the justification of that blasphemy? Vatican II for who is to say that that painter cannot paint that who is to restrain him? In what name shall he be restrained? It is Vatican II. And it is this mentality, this evil, that was served up to us by St. Roncalli. This destruction of the Catholic faith in these countries and of the Catholic culture 
found its origin in the perverted and heretical mind of St. Roncalli. And he is beatified today by the Novus Ordo along with Pope Pius IX. And how sorry we should feel for Pope Pius IX that he has this smudge on his reputation to be put in the same category as that man. Let us pray to St. Pius X that these heretics who are intruders into our faith and our church be sent away without delay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.